So I just landed my Learjet. I uh, got a little airport back there. And some of you may know that already. I just came from my Malibu mansion. Wait a minute, no, was it Bel Air? I don't remember where I came from. I, I'll have to call Carolyn, I don't remember. I know I got several mansions and by the time my day starts and gets ended, I'm, I have no idea where we're at most of the time. But I always have to come here to make this video so I can make, you know, all that money. <laughs> I accuse a lot of lying about living off grid. A lot of people seem to think I have another place that we go to. And I, I admit that you could make a lot of money off YouTube. If your views, if you're getting 30 or 40,000 views per video, you, you, you could do pretty good. I don't get those many views and I'm happy with the little bit of money I get from YouTube. It pays the food bill. I'm always accused of not actually living off grid one way or another. There's those who think I make so much money that I live somewhere else and I just come here. And that, and that one never makes sense. I mean, I give too much evidence that we live here. I show you my coffee pot, the dirty coffee pot, the chickens. I mean, in order for me to do what people think I do, I don't know how to have chickens. I'm not gonna put chickens in an airplane. Uh, I used to make these stupid videos. Well, I mean, I, I still make them. Kind of started this one like that, where I take a, all the chickens to the neighbor's house and they babysit. The tiny house build, you can go back and watch the build. We came here and lived in the truck camper. Prior to that, you can go to the videos prior to that where we were living in the truck camper throughout the country. So there's a progression. One of the things people say, you don't live off grid is I'm on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, that automatically disqualifies you for living off grid. My definition of living off grid and always has been, and I've never lied about this is well, I almost want to add one, and I might put it in here a little bit, but no water, running municipality water, no municipality sewer, and no company electric. So no company providing electric. These are the things I have to put in place. I have to make work for myself. And in order to do that, you got to put in these little systems, you know, solar panels and sanitation. And I've talked to you about my sanitation. I, I can't talk about it because code enforcement actually asked me not to because the YouTube viewer turned me in. And, and then water, we have our own well. And recently I've clearly demonstrated over the last several months that we are now running our well water off of the, the solar panels. A lot of people would accuse me in the past of not living off grid because we ran the generator so much. Again, I'm not having a company power us I'm producing my own power one way or another, and I'm having to make that work financially. So that, that was always been my definition. But one of the things that always gets me in trouble is this power line. And I talk about this power line all the time. To me, it's a blessing. I'm very happy to have it. When you think about living off grid, a lot of people think about living far away from people. And I think, in my mind, that people live far away living off grid simply because the property is cheaper there. Not because they want to live far away. I mean, sometimes it's kind of convenient being able to go to the gas station or if you want some, a tub of ice cream and you can go a reasonably short distance to get some ice cream, that, that's pretty nice. I don't want to be an isolationist. I don't, a lot of people think you got to live on the moon in order to live off grid. I just want to be disconnected from people telling me what to do and being controlled by people and constantly worried about the bill coming in. Oh, I ran the air conditioner this month. What's the bill going to be like? Well, here, if I run the air conditioner, I don't have a bill. It's just I ran out of electric. But having that power line means I found cheap property and I didn't have to go a million miles away to find it. It was good for me and Carolyn. We liked that. I understand that people want to live far away from people. But in my mind, that makes life a little bit more difficult. I watched a video just a few minutes ago, somebody talking about they were having to 
bring lumber in with helicopters. Oh my goodness, can you imagine how expensive that would have been? A lot of people compare me to these very rich off-gridders. We're not rich, far from it, which is one of the reasons we bought this place. So we could become richer. The idea behind what we're doing is we want to be able to be, remain debt-free. We were debt-free and we want to remain that way. And we wanted to be able to buy everything with cash. Again, that's kind of one of those definitions of being off-grid. I don't have to rely on a bank. It makes me self-sufficient. Now people will say, oh, your taxes, you don't, you don't own that property, you got taxes. Well, I mean, yes, I understand that. That $43 uh, a year really does put a damper on, on us being able to live off-grid. But that's my point. I was able to find a cheap piece of property with a power line that's going through it that literally nobody wanted for 20 years. The guy was trying to sell this place for 20 years. Nobody wanted it. But I did. Because I didn't need to have a fancy place. I just wanted some place I could put a little tiny house. The power line doesn't matter to me. Oh, it's gonna make you sick. No, not these power lines. I mean, these power lines are the same power lines they run up and down every street in the United States. Every street has this. Three wires, three wires running. Well, I guess it's four wires. And then you got your cable company wire running underneath it. So no, it's not gonna make me sick. And we're not living right directly underneath it. Oh, got a bug biting me here. Living off grid to me is just being as self-sufficient as possible. And having this mindset, the security knowing that if something were to happen, and I'm not talking about SHTF or anything like that, but if something were to happen to, to the power grid or the water, and the water is kind of a big one. I have water anytime I want it. And I have multiple ways to get it. No matter what happens, I got water. I can take a shower anytime I want. I can get a glass of water anytime I want. In my mom's municipality, we've been, I've been there twice while we were nomads. I would stay at mom's house for one reason or another, different reasons, and I'd just park in her driveway. And I'd stay there for a month. And both times, water was shut down both times one time it snowed and the water line busted and they shut it down well i needed water so i thought well there's two foot of snow out here i'll just melt the snow put it in the berkey and now i got water i was amazed how much propane it took to melt snow it took a phenomenal amount and the carbon monoxide detector went off and it was just terrible. I couldn't keep up with the Berkey. The Berkey is, does three gallons in maybe an hour. Well, it was actually going faster than me melting the snow on the Coleman camp stove. I wasted all this money to get water because the, the city didn't have water. But I always got water here and I have a backup supply of water. And I got 200 gallons of water just in case the well doesn't work for a few weeks for whatever reason. I've got water and I don't have to worry about it. Oh, if the well broke, I would stress, but that's just in my nature. But being able to go out and buy anything I want, well, there's two parts to that. It's pretty nice. If the truck breaks down, I'm debt free. I could go get a nice truck. It wouldn't be new, but it'd be nice. I wouldn't have to worry about it. When Carolyn's son moved here, needed the camper, we was able to get the camper. Without a credit card or stress or how we're gonna pay this bill or this is gonna put a real financial burden on me, I don't have to work a 40 hour a week job or a 50 hour, 60 hour. In one case, 90 hours I worked for an employer. I work for YouTube and now, don't get me wrong, YouTube is kind of stressful. It's a, it, it's a tough job to keep going. It's always on your mind. But as far as making a video, it's not too terribly tough. I can do a video. Well, I omit. I spend most of the morning thinking about a video idea. And like today, I didn't have one. And I knew I was gonna suffer. I gotta have a video idea by noon, at least how I feel about things. 
That way I can get, get the video recorded, edited, uploaded before it's time for me and Carolyn to sit down and watch TV. Netflix. Oh, you don't live off grid, you got Netflix. I mean, that's just, I, I do live off grid. I, I got the three things that I want. So YouTube is, is, is a job, but it's, it's my job. I get to determine the hours. And if I'm behind, I can fix it. If I'm ahead, I don't have to work as hard. Some days are easier to come up with a video idea than others. So I don't have to make a lot of money. And I don't have to worry about being fired. If YouTube goes down, yeah, I mean, oh, what are you going to do? Well, it's no different than being employed by someone and getting laid off or getting fired or getting transferred. Last job I was at got transferred. That was terrible. I hated that. I hated it for the entire time I worked there. So if YouTube shuts down, maybe I'll go to a different platform. Maybe I pick up my wrench and start making money uh, rebuilding small engines. Before, I, try, I thought about doing that, rebuilding small engines, but there was a small engine shop just down the road from us. And I thought, nah, I'd never be able to compete with him. But he shut down. So I, I could do small engine repair. I don't need a lot of money. Buy lawnmowers, old ones that need repair, pretty cheap, repair them, clean them up, put them on Facebook Marketplace and sell them. I could even deliver them, get myself a small trailer, put it on a trailer and deliver them. There's options out there for me because I'm debt free. I'm not living in a constant fear of losing my job. I'm debt free and I have a savings that if something happens, I can go a very, very, very long time because we don't spend money. We don't have to worry about the electric bill. We don't have to worry about insurance. We don't have to buy insurance. As long as I keep people off my property and they don't get hurt, I don't need insurance. People tell me to get a dog all the time. I mean, you get a dog. Well, some kid was strolling by and the dog attacked, there'd be an insurance claim. So I don't have to worry about that. So I just keep people off my property. If they trespass, then their injuries are on them. If the house burns down, I can fix it on my own dime. We could stay in the camper if we had to. So living off grid means my community allows me to do things that most communities wouldn't allow me to do. Building a tiny house, couldn't do that in many municipalities, many, many of them. I mean, there's tiny houses being sold for 40, 50, 60, some of them $90,000 that don't pass ordinance in many municipalities. So you gotta find a place like this anyways. I mean, heck around here, you can literally buy a shed from Home Depot, I've said this many times, and go into a trailer park. There's a trailer park down the road with a Home Depot shed on it. That's the off-grid that I'm talking about, where people don't care what you live in. And I live in an area, it's kind of interesting, I live in an area, it's a kind of a tourist area. I don't live in the hub of the tourist area, I kind of live on the outskirts of it. And you'll have a million dollar home. Well, even in the hub, you'll have a million dollar home sitting right next to a mobile home. It's incredible. And neither one of them complain about the other one. Now, of course, the million dollar home is probably someone's vacation home. And the mobile home is someone's actual home. But the million dollar people leave us alone just like the trailer park leaves you alone. That is the kind of off-grid I'm talking about where anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. Imagine this. You got an old car that you could sell for $4,200. You don't need it anymore, so you sell it. You got that $4,200, you find a place like this, and you buy it, and you can immediately start putting your systems together. Whether you go get a Home Depot shed, of course you want to do it all on cash, you don't want to do credit, or you build yourself a tiny house. It's doable for everybody. Putting in the systems yourself, and being disconnected. You know, if I had the electric, I am, pretty sure the electric company would come out and do an inspection on my my systems a long time ago i had a hundred year old home i wanted to upgrade from a hundred amp meter base 
to a 200 amp meter base I think is what it was don't quote me I'm sure that's what it was 200 amp meter base so I had to redo all the wiring and I went to Home Depot they gave me all the things I needed it and I duplicated everything like it was originally I didn't change anything the electric company came out and says no you can't do this you got to do you drill a hole through the roof and all kinds of things I mean they just came out with a whole list of things I had to do the only person I have to satisfy here is myself and if it doesn't work it doesn't hurt anybody but me so that's why I live off grid so that power line it really is a blessing to me this property would be so much more expensive if it wasn't here I can live with it so if you'll click this up next box take to a video where I was talking about we had a disaster that struck so if I can inspire you to have your own off-grid whatever that is whatever it means to you so you can live your dreams thanks for watching